Hello everyone, Corbs here bringing you another video tutorial. Today's video tutorial is on how to create a custom transition with audio using Sony Vegas. Alrighty guys, this was uh, a special request from somebody. They asked me how I did something and would I do a more in-depth video tutorial on exactly how to make the animated doors that I have on mine. So here I'll give you an example of what I have on mine. When I switch, as you can see I have a little bit of an animation and it's doors open and close. Well, as the title says, I have audio with this so I'm going to show you how I did that so what we're going to do is here let me minimize that and bring that down and I will bring up uh, an example for you right here this was just recorded this is one that has the audio on it so let's take a look at it So today, I'm going to show you how to make that. Uh, it's very simple. Basically, all you need is just a few things. Uh, you're going to need a left and a right and an audio. And for the circular, you're going to also need a center, which is right there. And I'll go more into it when uh, we get there. So let's take a look at it in Sony Vegas. Here it is exactly right here. This is uh, that video that you just saw me use as a transition. We have all the layers. Now as you can see, here's that center that I was talking about, which is the just the round. <clears throat> we have the right door and the left door and the audio. Uh, and that's the layers. One thing you have to know is the top layer uh, the higher it is up on here is going to be where it shows up. So like right here, if I sit there and let's make this invisible, as you can see, uh, over on the right, you can see how it disappears and it doesn't show. Uh, same with uh, right door. Here, let me, uh, that's the right door gone. Left door. And as you can see, since my right door has this centerpiece on it as like a like a lock type system um that's why i have this one above the left door because i want it look like it goes over if i swap these you'll see what happens see how that looks just all wrong so that's how that's done so uh we come over here and i will play from the beginning And as you saw, the circle thing didn't show, and that was because I accidentally left that hit hidden. Now, you may wonder, uh, how did I sync up the video to the audio? And that's the trick. What I did differently was I created the audio after I had the video. As you can see, here's my video, uh, my audio, and the different layers. I'm using a free program called Audacity. <clears throat> and uh, you do have to download a special plugin to uh, get the mp3 but there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that and uh, a lot of documentation on how to do that so I'm not even going to go into that because lots of people have already done it um, but what I did was I started off with uh, mostly four audio here's the door start the door midsection and here's the close sound and then I have a buzz well I got all these sounds actually straight out of return to castle wolf sign itself and I thought that was fitting because this is the transition for RTCW as you can see wolf sign so whenever I'm streaming wolf sign I will use this one it's for my throwback Thursdays for my stream 
And uh, with Twitch's new Stinger transition that's now standard with all OBS, it does support audio. And that's why I was like, hey, I'm going to go all out, do audio, and I'll put in this video tutorial because it was requested to at least do the video tutorial. So with audio, that's just one little layer to the whole project. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to start with a new project. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm not even going to bother saving this. Um, so here, let me pause this for a sec. Okay, so here we got the new project going. And what we're going to do is first make sure we have the project settings to what we want. We want it 1920 by 1080. You have to be at 1920 by 1080. But what I do also want to say is let's go to... Uh, do, do, do. What am I looking for? properties sorry right here we're at 1920 by 1080 that's where we want but we don't want 59.40 fps so what we want to do is come down here and select hd uh 1080 uh dash 60i so we want 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 frames per second so we're going to select that one for those of you guys that probably tried doing this before and it wasn't quite right you were probably rendering at it uh, maybe 720p, and that's why it was off size. So you got to make sure your your project setting is at 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 FPS. And, of course, make sure the frame rate matches at 29.97. So there we go right there. Audio probably defaults good, but just keep it at sample rate at 48,000. Uh, bit rate uh, bit depth at 16 um, and that's that's all good so just click apply click OK and now you should see your changes right here so now we need to get the files that we need to add so what we're going to do is I'm going to come down here come to the trans images and I'm going to just drag this off I'm inside right here all media I'm just dragging it into there and then I'm going to come back to OBS and uh, actually, sorry, RTCW doors. Now I want to highlight all three of these and just drag them over. So now I have the left door, the right door, the audio, and the center image. So what I want to do is first start off with the center image. I'm going to put it up here. Then I'm going to take the left door, the right door, and the audio. Well, let me zoom in, just using the mouse wheel, and I'm going. You have to come up with how much time do you want to make this. I'm going to make this a total of six six second animation, but I'm going to have it a total length of eight seconds. So what I'm going to do is, and I know I want the rotation at two seconds. So I'm going to set this at two seconds right there. And what you do is you go by uh, when you get down to the bar, like right here, where you see one, two, three. Just bring it up to the uh, bar to the left. So there we have that. And I want to drag these all the way out to 8 seconds. Both the doors. Like that. Now what I want to do is move this, uh, uh, this animation at 2 seconds. So what I'm going to do is have 2 seconds for the door opening. 2 seconds for the center rotation. And then 2 seconds of the door. Uh, sorry. Doors closing for 2 seconds. Rotation for two seconds, then the doors opening for two seconds, and then I'm going to have two seconds of blank, which also is going to have a little bit of audio. But now, as you can see right here, I have the doors mix, mixed up. So what I'm going to do is just grab this one and pull it up. So now the layers are correct. Now, what we want to do is let's start off with the right door. You'll see this little icon right here. It's called the event pan slash crop. We're going to click on this icon for the doors and this is what it's going to look like here i'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger and now what you want to do is as you can see there is a circle right there that's circling it and that is going to be basically the field of view the way we're going to create the animation is first we want to come down and go to the first two seconds 
and then we want to hit this little plus. Now we want to go to four seconds, hit the plus, then six seconds, like that. So there we go. Now at the two seconds, uh, we want, actually, sorry, we want to go back to the first. I like to click on the little diamond once I have the slider on it. And what I want to do is slide this all the way to the left. Now as you can see, what I did there, see how the door is moving? So I'm not actually moving the graphic, I'm moving the view area. So, and basically all these little diamonds here, they're just keyframes. That's all they are. They're frames. If you ever mess with Flash back when Flash was popular, all it is is keyframes. So now when we go from here all the way to here, as you can see, there is a transition of that door right there. So now we want to come to the uh, last point on our thing, which is at six seconds. Click on the diamond again, and then bring this back just off of that door. Like that. So now, if we sit there and close this, and we play through the animation. Here, let me uh, get rid of that audio. You can see how it animates. Now I'm going to want to do the same thing to the next door. So again, click on this little uh, event pan and crop. Go to two seconds. Click the little plus, we're adding a keyframe, come to four seconds, keyframe, and we're going to do six seconds. I sometimes do, out of habit, I come to the very last frame and I put it in a keyframe. I, I do that out of habit. It's not really needed because it will run off this one, but to me it doesn't hurt. So now what we want to do is select the first frame. And again, same thing, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to bring this one back a little bit. And then I want to come to this same frame here. And then we can close. Now, you can see the doors there. And see how they're out of whack a little bit, like that door right there is just showing but this one isn't so what I want to do is uh, re-click on the left frame here and here let me minimize this a little bit I want to click on the first frame and just sit there and Oops, I'm on the wrong thing. Hold on. Control Z, that's a beautiful thing about Control Z. I was on the rotate. But what I want to do is just slide this to the point where it looks about even with that one. So now, uh, if I close this, the animation is going to look pretty good. So what I want to do is stop that because now I want to come to uh, the openings part. Right there and come back into the event pan. And now I want to click on this node here and just slide this a little bit to the right to match up on the left. Doesn't have to be exact because you're talking about milliseconds, but close enough. Now that we have that, now we have to do the animation of the center. So what we want to do is just bring this about, I guess about halfway is fine. And this is the little tricky part. 
you want to start off with make sure even if it's a round image you want to have it squared off so if it's 200 pixels wide you want to have it two pixel 200 pixels high have it squared off it makes it a lot easier um, so now we click on the event pan and crop we're going to want to zoom out now you're going to see something we got to shrink this down a little bit and you want to try keeping it square because remember we have a square part of the easiest way is to do this since you have the grid use the grid to your advantage But now, as you can see, I can move this left and right, but I can't move this up and down. So you just come over here. I'm just going to hold down. But I got to bring this up anyways. I, I need to make that smaller. And this, this part takes a little finagling a little bit. So don't expect to uh, rush this, but as you can see, I'm doing this pretty quick, and uh, it's coming out pretty good. And we keep bringing that down, and then I just shift this off to the left a little bit. Now to see if this actually goes over, this is where we're going to want to shrink that up a little bit. Just shut that down. Then you can see, okay, what do you have to do? It's a little bit too big. So I'm going to bring this up and out a little bit. And now let's bring that up. So I'm going to click the up arrow on the Y axis. And now, as you can see, it's really close. And you can use this for fine tuning, um, which I recommend. But as you can see, that looks pretty good. Let me uh, bring this up a, like one spot, check it. It's a little bit too big still, so I'm just going to go just a hair. Like that. Oops. Okay, I went a little bit too small. There we go. That looks perfect because this is an animation. It doesn't have to be exact. So now that we've uh, finagled that into position, now we have to do the same thing before. We want to come to the end of the two seconds, which is right there, and then click the plus. Now what we want to do is get so we have that loop, and we want to spin this. But remember, we're, we're rotating the actual canvas we're not rotating the image so depending on which way you rotate the canvas is going to dictate which way the animation rolls so uh, so if you want the animation to rotate clockwise you have to rotate this counterclockwise if I if I remember correctly so I want this what I'm going to do is hold on to this. I'm going to left click on this so I have the rotation symbol. And I'm just going to drag to the left and bring it all the way around. 
And I want that F to come back to a full 360 degree. And then I let go of left click. And that's it. Now I close that. Now, if I go through this, you'll see that it rotates clockwise. And that's what I was looking for. So just remember it's opposite. So if you want it to rotate counterclockwise, you do the rotation clockwise. Because you're rotating the frame. You're not rotating the image. So basically think of it as you're holding a camera. Instead of spinning the whole world upside down, you're just spinning the camera. That's it. All the objects are staying still. The camera is the one that's rotating. That's essentially what you're doing. So now that we have that, we can sit there and build a, a dyma dynamic preview. I can even speak right now. By what we want to do is highlight the whole area. And as you can see, I just saw that we have a little bit of a mistake right there. So that's the left door. So what we want to do is uh, let's get rid of this. Normally what I do is I just go like that, so no big deal. But I'm just going to get rid of this node. Uh, I, I'm calling it a node, but sorry, keyframe. So like that. And let's uh, play through this again. That looks good, so let's uh, just drag this all the way to the very end. And let's insert audio. Come up to tools. And we're going to do build dynamic RAM preview. You can also press shift B, which will do this. Now what it's doing right now is it's building the animation uh, as like a temporary, but storing it um, in like a little cache. So you click play. And if you can't do uh, the full preview, like this uh, preview full you can come up to here go to preview do a half or quarter uh, depending on how much RAM you actually have on your computer will dictate what you can do I have 16 gigs so I'm easily able to do it eight seconds easily um, so now that we have that now we have to render it we just saw how it looks looks good now let's render it what we're going to do is click on file and we're going to go to render as and if you remember my previous video on rendering, I'll go over it again, but this is how you do it. You want to select QuickTime 7 MOV, get the drop down, and select the 3 megabytes per second video. Now click on Customize Template. Now what we want to do is uh, include video uh, under the NTS square pixel. Again, we want to do high definition 1920 by 1080. Uh, this, if you don't set that, will also cause your image to be the wrong size. Frame rate, we want to do 29.970. Uh, uh, field order, uh, leave that alone. Pixel aspect ratio, one, that's perfect. Video format, uh, what we want to do is select PNG or also known, I like to call it ping, which is uh, an image f type that allows transparency. Compressed depth, we're going to switch this to 32 BPP color. And uh, when we come to the audio, we're going to leave it at this. Just remember that we are using uh, Yeah, that's good. Uh, sample rate of 48,000 with a bit depth of 16 and we're doing channels is stereo so stereo that's two but whatever uh, 48,000 is the number you really want to remember the sample rate so we click OK and I'm going to name this one RTCW underscore trans T-R-A-N-S I'm going to save it right to my desktop and click render. We'll be right back when this is done rendering, so stay tuned.
Alrighty, we are back and it has finished rendering. It only took a couple minutes. Tops. Uh, so here is our new trans video that we made. And if we click on properties, you're going to see that it's 329 megabytes. Well, let's get that down a lot smaller. So if we double click on it or open it, let's open with, uh, I think VLC will play it. Yeah, not very well. So uh, what we're going to want to do is now open up WinFF. Um, so we're going to be right here. I'm just going to drag and drop that in. And again, the same settings. Let's do 15,000. Frame rate is 29.97. Video size is going to be 1920 by 1080. Uh, we're going to do two pass and now we come to our audio audio bit rate the sample rate is what I told you remember 48,000 um, and we're going to leave that empty audio channel let's put that at uh, let's do one channel since uh, we're going to have the audio on both sides and what we're going to do is uh, click on convert. But first, let's come over to uh, output details. And let's do output. I'm going to select my desktop. Click OK. And for those that don't have Google in your drop down, I don't know why. You guys don't have this. This would be something that you would have to ask over there. Um, I'm not really sure. So I, I cannot answer that. But you do want to make sure you're on web and generic full screen and all that. And then what we want to do is click convert. Just making sure everything's there. Yep. Click convert. And I will pause this right here and come back when this is done. Alrighty guys, we're back. That took another couple minutes. So uh, what we're going to want to do is now we have to hit any key if we finish. And we're going to see right here. Uh, that's not it. Where is it? Right at the top. I'm blind. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and let's see the properties on this one. The properties on this is 7.83 megabytes versus... The 329 megabytes that originally was so as you can see we chopped this in little bits and only kept a little bits <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to close this and close this now what we want to do is I'm going to come up to my uh, OBS stuff where I store all my OBS and I'm going to come down and just drag my trans web M there and now what I'm going to do is uh, come to OBS and let's go to RTCW doors. We're going to go to properties and right now I have it on RTCW underscore tran. Remember we did it trans with an S. So I'm going to select browse. <clears throat> come here. Go to OBS and it's going to be trans with an uh, S right there. We select open. And uh, while we're here, it says trans point frame. So what I'm going to do is uh, just open up this real quick. Find out roughly around where center is. And center is at 90. So what I want to do is set this to 90. And make sure the transition point is on frame. And then we click OK. And now if we switch to BRB, there's the closing, the rotation, and the opening. So now you may be wondering, how did I get that there? Well, all I did was I clicked the plus, and I, is it this one here? I believe it's just called Stinger. 
We select Stinger. Yep, it is Stinger right here. And you uh, browse for the file. And then you just select that to frame. And then you select, put it in the frame that you want. So let's get rid of that. The Stinger Trans uh, right here, this is the old one. Which, don't even use this one. The other one's better. This one does not support audio. The other one does. So, make sure you use, uh, when you add, use Stinger, not Stinger Transition. I gotta get rid of this. I'm going to uninstall that one later. So, let's see how well the audio and everything works. As we can see, it is 100%. So, full screen, everything. So, that's good. So, now, let's come and start recording. Here we are doing a little bit of recording. And let's switch to the BRB. And remember, the transition is 8 seconds long. So once the door is open, you want to give it a couple extra seconds before you re-click it. You don't want to sit there and do it right away. So now that's open and that's done. Let's click stop recording. And I already have the folder open for the recordings, videos. And let's see how this works. Here we are doing a little bit of recording and let's open. You might give it a couple extra seconds before you that's open and that's done. Let's click stop recording. As you can see, the transition audio was way too loud. So now what I want to do is, uh, let me close that. I'm just going to come in here. Now I want to bring down the audio a little bit. So the way I'm bringing down the audio is I'm going to drop it down by about half. And I'm going to come up and click tools and I'm going to build dynamic preview again. This was a step I should have done before, but I accidentally forgot. But I'm not going to go through the whole process of rendering and all that again. Because it's going to be the same exact steps uh, to do. But I'm going to do it for myself. But you guys don't have to worry about doing that. But with a dynamic preview, you're going to hear the difference between the audio was and how it is. And I could probably bring that down a little bit more. And let's just drop that down a little bit more. I don't want the transition audio to be extremely loud. I want to be somewhat quiet. So I think right there, let's... There we go. That that sounds about good. But it's all play until you get it to where you want it just right. So here I'm going to show you what the final product looks like and sounds like. So just give me a few minutes. Alrighty, we are back. Um, so let's give this a little bit of a test. So I've already done the changes, so let's see how this sounds. Okay, we got recording going. Now we're going to close doors. And we're going to count one, two, three, and then switch back. And there we go. So now that's done, let's close or stop recording. And let's see how this is. Okay, we got recording going. Now we're going to close doors.
And we are going to count one, two, three, and then switch back. And there we go. So now so. that's done, let's close or stop recording. So much better, it's not as loud. Uh, I did notice something with this transition, the singer transition, the built-in one. Though it does audio, what it does is it will lessen down the mic and whatever desktop audio, whatnot you have going on for the transition audio, which I don't know if I like that or not. It's better than not having audio, but I guess I'm not a big fan of it doing that. Um, so, but as you can see, it works just fine. Well, guys, I hope this video tutorial helps some of you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them below. Um, if you like these video tutorials and you'd like to help support the channel, help me and my uh, alliance clan out, uh, feel free to stop by my website, headshotdomain.net. Uh, donations are always welcome. Or you can come to my uh, Twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash dreaded corpse links are below the video and uh you can donate there or just come in chit chat always down for talking shop with people so you guys have a good one and take care